Welcome back to our conversation with the author of the New England Muzzle Awards, Northeastern University journalism professor Dan Kennedy. And Dan, people who want to, obviously, we're just going to touch on a couple of these awards here in our limited time. If people want to delve into all of them and read more and get appropriate links, where can they do that? You will find a link to the Muzzle Awards at the top of my personal website, dankennedy.net. And that will take you right into the GBH News website, and you can uh, you can entertain yourself uh, on the spot. Okay, definitely uh, worthwhile reading. One of your award winners is Tucker Carlson of Fox News for an incident in which he attacked by name and therefore endangered two freelance journalists who he falsely claimed were poised to reveal the address of his home, his hideaway up there in Maine. Uh, what happened here briefly, but what more to the point, what does it tell us about both Carlson and the media organization that enables him? This was a really, really scary situation. Uh, the New York Times had hired a couple of Maine-based freelance journalists, a, a reporter and a photographer, uh, to do a big profile of Tucker Carlson. And Carlson was freaking out that they were going to dox him, uh, expose the address of his home in Maine, show pictures of it. And the Times, according to reporting by Eric Wemple of the Washington Post, had assured Carlson on two separate occasions that they weren't going to do that. And Carlson went on the air and identified them by name and nevertheless claimed that they were about to dox him, even though he had been told that wasn't going to happen. And his fans did the rest. Uh, there was an absolutely harrowing 411 call that the Washington Post obtained of the photographer up on the top of his house, uh, the third floor of his house, with other members of his family calling the police saying, we don't know what's going to happen. There were people trying to come in. This is because of Tucker Carlson. It was pure intimidation based on a lie. Uh, the Times ended up never running a story, uh, even though they had had no intention of, uh, of doxing Carlson. And it was just, um, you know, a pretty horrendous example of a extremely popular and toxic media figure using his power to uh, essentially intimidate the New York Times. Well, in the meantime, uh, Carlson is busy endangering a lot more than a few journalists. He's endangering the lives of many Americans uh, by spewing uh, anti-vaccination rhetoric on his top-rated cable TV show. Uh, Fox News clearly doesn't care, at, this, at least up to now. They're not going to do a thing about it. What can be done about it? You know, I'm not really sure what can be done about it. You know, I sometimes hear people talk about, let's bring back the fairness doctrine. Uh, the fairness doctrine never would cover cable TV. It was strictly a broadcast thing. Um, we did see... And it's free speech, right? He's protected. It, it, He's, he's free to cry fire in a crowded theater, right? You are free to shout fire in a crowded theater, provided that there is actually a fire. Uh, you are not free to falsely shout fire in a crowded theater. And as we saw after various personalities on Fox and some other right-wing media outlets uh, spewed lies about voting machines, uh, maybe the way to deal with some of this is for uh, lawsuits against them uh, brought by the aggrieved parties. And because our time is up, I'm just going to seize the last word and add my own suggestion that this whole mess might be alleviated to some degree by consumers of news being smarter about what it is they're being told, who's telling them, what their motivations might be, and uh, really uh, working a little harder to seek out the truth. Professor Kennedy. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Go to dankennedy.net for a link to more detail on the Muzzle Awards.